Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, the severe weather is picking up. Matter of fact, we have a potential tornado outbreak coming. So for today, we do have severe weather, and we do have chances for tornadoes for today. But for tomorrow, it is really going to grow towards the East Coast. We even have an enhanced section now, and that is for your chances for tornadoes, as well as for the Central. This is going to keep going for day three. All the way to day four. This is just a growing threat with these two storms that's coming through back to back. Plus, I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on with the tropics. We do have new data, so we'll let you know what you can expect and what you can expect all the way for the month of August. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along. Remember, you can always follow me in other platforms. Links are in the descriptions, and I will put timestamps below. That way you can separate severe weather and the tropics that way it can help you get through your day a little bit quicker so let's get to your information now yesterday we did have eight tornado reports we also had a lot of flood reports and a lot of wind damage and damage and wind gusts that did pass through and did get all the way up into the 80s yesterday and these tornadoes did go through colorado nebraska iowa and illinois yesterday we do have threats for today like i showed you but tomorrow it is really going to start ramping up now, just like I showed you yesterday about this heat going towards the southeast, you do have the heat advisories and all of this orange for today, plus the excessive heat watch and all of this pink. Now, remember, this is going to start modeling down. You still have a few more days, but as we go towards later in August, this cool front is coming down and you have a lot of colder temperatures in the morning. But for today, the heat indices are going to raise right back up again all the way towards Florida, even get towards 110 all the way into Louisiana. And then your overnight lows is going to stay in the high 80s and some people staying in the 90s. Plus the heat indices coming right back again for tomorrow going towards the Carolinas and Florida, bring a lot of people over 105, even almost 110 heat indices. But you can see on climate forecast system that as we go towards the 20s of August, we do have a cooler temperatures coming through for your morning lows. A lot of people going to be in the 60s all the way to the south. And this is coming in for August 21st through August 25th and maybe a little bit longer. Now for today, you do have a big marginal and a slight risk for severe weather. You do have chances for hail, even significant hail right here. And it is black at least two inches in diameter. So far, here's the cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. And the large hail is the white line on top. Plus, you also have chances for damage and winds for today. Same area, big 5% and a big 15%. So here's the cities and states at risk for the damage and winds for today. And your tornado threat for today, and this is going to grow as we go into tomorrow. So far, you have a 2%. Here's your cities and states at risk so far. If this grows throughout the day, I will update it on my community tab. And as we go into tomorrow for Monday, now we have the big enhanced section for these storms as they pass through, plus a slight risk going over the central plains. And we do have a risk for tornadoes for tomorrow. A big 2% in multiple areas, but now the whole east coast is covering a big 2% as well as a 5%. So, so far, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for tomorrow for Monday. I will update you as we get closer to this. We also have the wind threat for tomorrow as well, and it is picking up right along the East Coast. Now you have a big 30%. So here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and winds for tomorrow. And remember, this could pick up even more, especially in that 30% area. We could see significant severe of hurricane force winds. And your hail threat for tomorrow is almost in the same locations. There's going to be a lot of severe weather, especially for today and growing into tomorrow. Here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for Monday. And a lot of these storms will be overnight as well. So as you go through today, this is going to cycle around, still bringing a good bit of rainfall. And as you go through this afternoon, it really sparks up as it goes towards Illinois as well. And these storms start building up in the southeast and towards the east coast. But once you go towards midnight, then it starts coming a little bit more where you can see the damage and winds coming in. You see the bowing out in that. And this is going to be overnight storms moving through Indiana, going through Kentucky, Ohio. Now this is also going to spread down Tennessee, go through the south overnight into the early morning hours. And when we get to daytime heating for tomorrow, it's going to spark right back up. Chances for tornadoes in multiple locations for tomorrow. Okay, this is going to be a significant event especially as we go into tomorrow. Then once we go to tomorrow evening, it really consolidates towards northeast, bring a lot of strong storms, and you get some moving through the southeast as well. 
then that's going to go into Tuesday. So we'll keep you updated, but tomorrow is looking like a really big event for severe weather, for chances for tornadoes. But you can see for today, as you look for your shear, as you move into the afternoon, you get some strong cells moving through Illinois, and these cells are getting some shear on them, guys, getting chances for your tornado threat also. So I think it will pick up a little bit for Illinois as it goes through Indiana as well. It's a very strong storms, and that is when you start to get your bow and out feature from your damage and winds that's coming with that as well. So that carries through all evening long. Now there is gonna be a lot of storms for tomorrow, but once we go into tomorrow evening, I really see an area right here over the northeast, also over the southeast. You can see this on your shear, that as these cells start ramping up in the southeast, you start getting some shear on those cells as they start moving through the southeast, bringing you your chances for your tornado. So just be aware of that. Also what's going on in the Northeast. You have a lot of storms that's moving through Virginia, also Maryland, Delaware, even going towards Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And these cells are getting some shear on them as well. So just be aware we have multiple areas, but it looks to me like some big areas going for the Northeast, also coming for the Southeast as we go through tomorrow evening. Now we'll give you an update in the morning. Let, let us know what the updates are in all the model data, but this is just what HRRR is predicting the atmosphere to be. It is looking volatile towards the southeast, also towards the northeast. So just be aware these two hot spots could be ramped up a little bit more. But you can see what your wind gusts are. as you go later tonight into the morning that those storms move through Illinois and Indiana is going towards 50 and 60, maybe even a little bit higher miles per hour wind gusts. And the storms coming towards the southeast do pick up to 50 and 60 as well. And once you go through tomorrow morning, then it goes through Kentucky, West Virginia. It builds up for Tennessee. You get 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. While you get some over here for the south central, you get some 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts as well. But then as the daytime heating kicks in for tomorrow, then it all spreads towards the northeast and the southeast. You have two areas where it's picking up towards 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Also along the coast of the northeast, it picks up towards 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts as well. And some isolated areas getting all the way up towards 60. So just be aware, I do see a hot spot towards Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Eastern Pennsylvania, over towards Southern New Jersey. Also over here towards upstate South Carolina, Northern Alabama, Northern Georgia, Eastern Tennessee. Those two areas look like they're getting a lot of shear in those cells and that's where the winds are picking up. But definitely for today, we definitely gotta watch out for these cells passing through Illinois and Indiana. Those are getting shear as well and a big bowing feature for some damaging winds. Plus, as that storm comes in for Tuesday, it's going to start bringing in some high winds Tuesday and Wednesday over here for Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, coming into Texas and Oklahoma. 40, 50, even getting 60, maybe even getting some 70 in there as that system comes on in. We do have severe weather for Tuesday and for Wednesday. But you see a closer look over here towards Illinois and Indiana. Those storms are getting 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts, maybe a little bit higher, guys. As this comes through northern Alabama, Georgia, and upstate South Carolina all afternoon long, even a little bit of North Carolina. Going 40, 50, even getting up towards 60 miles per hour wind gusts. And then later this evening, it picks up for southern Indiana, going to southern Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, even Tennessee and western North Carolina. A big hot pocket for 40, 50, even up to 60 miles per hour wind gusts right there as well, as that carries towards the northeast and goes further down the southeast. It's going to be multiple states getting a lot of 40, 50, and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Still showing right here for a big hot pocket from Virginia all the way to Pennsylvania. Also down here for northern Alabama going towards upstate South Carolina and for Georgia. And some hail. When you look at your updraft helicity, you can see over here from Colorado towards the panhandle of Texas, you get some chances for some large hail. Also for those storms moving through Illinois and Indiana, have chances for a lot of hail to come in those storms as well. But as we go into tomorrow, it really starts picking up in those storms that's moving across the southeast and the northeast. You also get some strong hail signatures coming across Colorado, western Kansas, western Nebraska, panhandle of texas we have them down here for northern alabama a little bit of northern georgia also going from west virginia into maryland into delaware pennsylvania new jersey a lot of places getting a lot of hail threats for today and tomorrow it's also going to bring this flash flooding risk all the way towards the northeast all the way until wednesday morning a real hot pocket for flash flooding for the northeast you have a couple of days of slight risk one of those could be moved up towards moderate once it starts training over and over. So you see a lot of people in the green to the blue. That's a quarter of an inch going towards a half an inch, a little more. But southern Minnesota going across Iowa, you get towards two inches. 
also Illinois, you get above one inch. But you can see it over here for Alabama, northern and southern Georgia as well. Over an inch of rainfall, upstate South Carolina, over an inch. But once you go from eastern Ohio, West Virginia, northern Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, going to New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Long Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. This is where y'all really start getting y'all rainfall coming. Over two inches in a lot of places. So y'all definitely have a lot of rain coming. This storm is so just going to train as you go from tomorrow morning all the way until Wednesday. Definitely Tuesday night. A big area for flash flooding. And you can see this in your outlook. So for today, you have a flash flood risk. You have a slight risk over here towards Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. We have a big area going all the way from southern Minnesota all the way down towards western Kentucky and Tennessee. For tomorrow, this is going to grow as the storm system moves in towards Washington, western Montana, and Idaho. Also towards the northeast, this is where you start going into that slight risk for flash flooding. And that will carry into Tuesday as well, go further towards the New England states, bring you into a slight risk. You might even get a moderate out of that. As you go into Wednesday, when that storm system comes in, it's going to bring you right into a slight risk for flash flooding once again. And once you go to Thursday, it's going to stay there for the upper Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic down here, getting to a slight risk. So there's multiple areas, definitely as you go Wednesday into Thursday. So this flash flooding is going to be an issue, but especially for the Northeast as you go for tomorrow into Tuesday. So you can see for Tuesday, you do have the marginal for severe weather, plus you have that slight risk building from that storm system coming in. So here's your cities and states at risk so far for Tuesday for severe weather. And we still have that 15% for Wednesday as well as that storm system starts moving on in a little further to the south. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. I will keep you updated. But you can see with your winds aloft, it is bringing a lot of strong winds, bringing your chances for your tornadoes for today. As you go into tomorrow, it's going to move across the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, bringing a lot of shear, a lot of winds going from west to east, and as you go through the northeast as well. Plus, that second system that comes in for Tuesday and Wednesday is bringing a lot of winds aloft as well. That is going to ramp up your severe weather in the south. That's why you're under a slight risk. But if you follow it, you'll see that possibly going to get a storm system moving off the east coast as you go into this weekend, guys. Maybe a system brewing, bringing you more rainfall. So far, not showing anything super strong, but it is going to be some kind of system getting some kind of low pressure moving right off the coast for this weekend. Now, the latest tropical update, I'm still showing this powerful wave right here is going to be moving to the west, and it is going to move west-northwest. Now, it still has that plume of dust that's going to be in front of it. It's still going to be behind it, so it could suppress it some. And remember, the trend has always been it's going to stay weak and then strengthen up as it gets a little further to the west, a little further into the warmer waters. There it is right there this morning, and it is moving to the west, guys, and it is a pretty powerful storm. So it will be getting closer. We'll be, we will be getting outlooks from National Hurricane Center soon. So far, they don't have anything in the next seven days. And you still see here from cyclone locations that it does stay weak, according to the euro, all the way to the west. Now, here's the two different locations. If it keeps getting pushed to the west, if this high pressure keeps growing and growing, which has been the trend, it will keep it to the west, which will keep it weak. At the same time, it could spark up still late as we get towards the 12th and 13th and still start growing into something coming towards our Gulf of Mexico, guys. So it's still a wave to watch. It is still going to be something that's going to form up late and stay weak until then. Until then, it's going to be a sneaky wave. And you can see the latest update on the potential velocity anomaly with the euro where you have unfavorable environment that's going to start moving in. But we do have favorable environment from the 12th all the way through the 13th and 14th right in our region right when that wave starts moving through. So I still believe this wave is something we need to watch. You can see this on the GFS as well. We have favorable environment moving in from the 12th through the 14th right in our region. We also have some more moving in in late August. And this is where GFS and Euro is different. GFS is seeing favorable environment moving in late August. Euro is seeing that we have unfavorable environment moving in maybe for the full month of August after this wave. So you can see the latest update with National Hurricane Center. In 48 hours, we're going to have multiple tropical waves moving through. We have a lot of rainfall going on in Jamaica right now. And this is going to continue to move to the west as this high pressure just builds all along into the Bay of Campeche. While we have these two waves moving to the west-northwest. Now in 72 hours, you can see how it moves further to the west-northwest. And this high pressure is starting to weaken back 
while a tropical wave starts moving to the Western Caribbean. So we definitely have to watch it because it's definitely on a west-northwest path. And you can see here from your probability of a chance for a tropical depression with the euro, it has grown like I told you it was going to. It always gets further and further. So in three days, that wave starts moving towards the Lesser Antilles. In four days, it keeps moving west-northwest. In five days, it consolidates towards the Dominican Republic, towards the Bahamas, and it gets stronger in six and seven days moving towards the Bahamas, towards Florida. So we definitely need to watch this tropical wave. As you keep going, you see it keeps going to the west. So we definitely need to watch that tropical wave, guys, because now it's showing even more strength. So remember, this storm is going to be one that's going to strengthen in the last minute and become a big threat for us. I will keep you updated on this. You can also see this on the possible cyclone locations according to Euro and GFS. The Euro is showing that it's going to go around this high pressure and strengthen up at the last minute, be a threat for the southeast and for the Gulf Coast. GFS is saying that this high pressure is going to keep extending out into the Gulf and it's going to move all this low pressure, all these storms, further to the west into the Gulf, maybe the Western Caribbean. So we definitely have two different storm paths. The one thing that's been taken out of the factor is the East Coast. But you can see this when you look at your GOES satellite. You have your plume of dust in front of it. You have your big plume of dust that's going to be coming behind it. While you have all this moisture gathering up together, and then it's going to be stuck in between these two plumes of dust keeping it where it's having a hard time to stay strong. So far becoming a disorganized group of thunderstorms that's starting to strengthen up, starting to thicken up with its precipitation as it moves in that same direction. And that's according to the GOES satellite as well. So I do see that this storm is going to the west-northwest, right towards Bahamas, right towards Florida, and possibly the Gulf Coast. You can also see this when you look at your tropopause with the Euro in the atmosphere way up high, that it does start moving towards the Lesser Antilles, but it starts getting involved with the high pressure of all that dust, and another wave gets involved, and that's the one that moves to the west. So the Euro sees what GFS sees, that something is moving to the west, but it also sees that we have another one that's moving to the northwest out of that, and we possibly have two tropical waves that might coincide a little bit, but still showing in the model data that it is going to crash and be something weak. Take that with a grain of salt. This is literally the, the end of the run, guys. But so far, it is seeing two upper-level lows trying to strengthen as it gets closer towards the Lesser Antilles. Now, when you look at your next 10 days precipitation, 10 days is pretty outrageous. It always changes, but just when you look at it, you can see with the Euro that all this precipitation is moving more on the eastern path, and it's still not showing anything for Texas. But when you look at an update from the next 8 to 14 day precipitation probability from the 13th through the 19th, right when we have all this tropical moisture moving through, you can see the National Weather Service has all this above average going all the way into Texas as it goes up on that high ridge from that negative NAO. And that is what you can see with the GFS, that it is bringing more precipitation into Texas as this goes all the way towards Florida, bringing a lot of people more rainfall. So you see how GFS is bringing that rainfall towards Texas, and then possibly as that tropical wave moves through, maybe bring even more. Now something could form, that's what it shows on this model run, something forms up still late in the western Gulf of Mexico, but even then, even if it don't form, which I really hope it don't, I hope it's just a group of disorganized thunderstorms, it could be bringing more rainfall towards the coast, the Gulf Coast of Texas. A lot of y'all that needs that rainfall, best case scenario, this tropical wave could be bringing this towards y'all. Plus, as you look with the long range update with the Euro, that you can see that potentially the rest of August that we have unfavorable environment coming in our region, guys. Everything could be coming into the Western Gulf of Mexico, maybe into the Eastern Pacific, all the way to the middle of September. Also, we could have some storms forming in the MDR, but not make it too far. So it could be coming in strong, weaken down as it comes through our region, and then maybe strengthen back up as it comes through the Gulf of Mexico into the Eastern Pacific. But when you look at a control member with the Euro all the way until that time, which is pretty far, guys, the Euro is seeing something forming up and coming by the Bahamas and going right by the East Coast. So we definitely have to watch these next tropical waves because they're going to start going west, northwest, and potentially something strong could be coming our way. But thank you so much for your time. God bless you and your families. Please get prepared for these storms. It is not going to be a joke. I think we have a lot of chances for tornadoes, especially in those areas that I have showed you, and the damage and winds. It's going to bring some power outages 
with that as well. Now remember, we do have some more rainfall coming a little further to the south and some cooler temperatures coming later in August further to the south. I will keep you updated on that. I know y'all need that relief. Just keep your faith. It is coming. It's summer. It's very hot. Matter of fact, I believe we are on a record streak for all this hot temperature. So just keep yourself cool. Keep your brain cool. You need to keep your brain out of control. You don't want to get into that little fog of all this heat that it brings to you. I wish the best for every single one of you. I will keep you updated on the tropics as well. Romans 15, 13, and 14. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Amen. I truly hope the best for all of y'all. I've seen a lot of crazy videos of this heat. Y'all are going through a lot of heat. God bless y'all. I hope this cool weather does keep coming down to the south and I hope it stays a lot longer. I know a lot of us are already ready for the winter. I know I am for sure. I know y'all are in the south. I'm from the south, from Louisiana my whole life. So I know how miserable it could really be down there. God bless you always. And remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And may he always bless y'all and bring y'all relief every day of your life. Because I know y'all need it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Be safe today, everybody. God bless you.